Hello and welcome to the 46 Planet Destiny Podcast. If you're listening to this, hopefully you're having a wonderful Thanksgiving. Because we're recording this on Wednesday, the day before Thanksgiving, because we're not going to be doing anything Destiny related on Thanksgiving, even though I probably will be. So, how are you guys doing? <laughs> oh, oh I mean, speak for yourself, because, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. yeah Don't well, worry, I'm, I'm in that club too. <laughs> yep. Oh, by the way, Dado's here, guys. Hi. Yeah, I'm here. Hello. <laughs> yeah, hello. 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 It's like you're, hey, guys. At, at this point, it's like you're third or fourth time on the podcast. Like, yeah, yeah, people been know here. I yeah, no, yeah, we know you are. I figure we might as well start off mm-hmm. with the uh, the biggest thing. Um, you know, start off with a little bit of controversy. The Recruiter Friend Program. Don't you mean the end of the world as we know it? <laughs> yes, oh, I believe so. I believe that's end exactly what we're talking the about. Recruiter Friend Program. Yes. End of all good things program. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, long story short, there is now a program in place where if you want to have a new friend come in and play Destiny or find someone that happens to be very new to Destiny and then you guys get to do this ex- this exclusive quest that pretty much takes you through the normal journey that a guardian would go through. Pope, you want to describe the process just so where so all the listeners are fully aware of it because you're the one that actually did the referring. Right. It. So it's it was pretty simple and it, they have a link on the homepage, you click on it. You select, uh, you want to refer a friend. It will give you a unique web address. It's a link. And you email that link. Your friend will then click on that link and it will go through that process of connecting your accounts. Then accept that link and it will show up as a kind of like an infinity symbol or like link chains. So when you look in your roster and you go to find somebody to play with, you'll see who that person is that you've been linked with for this refer a friend quest. Like basically all these quests are done with your linked guardian. They cannot be done solo. There's no way to like you can't just like buy another copy of Destiny. You have to do the entire quest with another person. You do like a story mission and then you do some patrol missions, a public event, uh, a daily story mission. So that means by that point you're pretty high up there in light level and you have to do a heroic uh, a heroic vanguard strike and then a, a nightfall strike. So very encompassing as far as Destiny goes. Like you, mm-hmm. you pretty much do everything up until the raid. The main thing is that you need to have a new copy of the Taken King. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. And it, it, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to be a new um, player. Yeah. So, so from what I understand of this, it's meant to uh, incentivize existing players playing with newer Guardians. Mm-hmm. Is it Correct. not doing that? No, it's 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 pretty much supposed to do that, but a lot of people have gotten their friends into Destiny. Like this is this is where the controversy part starts. Mm-hmm. Um a lot of people have already gotten their friends into Destiny, maybe when the Taken King first came out or earlier than that or 8 minutes before they came out with this idea. So people are kind of pissed about that. You know, I've gotten plenty of my friends oh, tons into, of tons of into Destiny. Yeah. I bought people PlayStation 4s so they could that they could play it. People are pissed about the timing because, oh, I just got my friend in. It's really bad timing. And to that, it's just like, there's not a lot Bungie could have done about that. It's just like, that's when this was ready. That's This is when it could come out. It's the holiday season. It's very, very good timing for the holiday season because, you know, it's primo game buying time. Mm-hmm. Um, now's a pretty good time to, to get into Destiny, all things considered. So it was just a, a, a timing issue. Well, um, but but the reason though that people are upset is that it's there's rewards locked behind it, mm-hmm. and right. that's that's the actual the grumpiness that's been formed. And, and the rewards are pretty good, right? The, I mean, they're cosmetic. It's, it's an emblem. It's an emblem, a shader, a sparrow, a couple of emotes, and a reskin of a uh, a sword. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the sword's the exact same thing. Starts at two twenty. It's a legendary it's just, sword. It's just a reskin. Right. Yeah. A legendary sword. Mm-hmm. It's just a reskin. Um so yes, people are upset that rewards are hidden behind a wall that they cannot access. And people have taken this to mean uh Bungie is trying to screw me. Uh they hate me, they hate veteran players, they hate everyone who's not a new player. And I think people are being a little dramatic about that. Yeah, because... when you say they can't access it, I think anybody could access this, right? You probably they can. find somebody they can. randomly on the internet who just bought Destiny and needs somebody to play with, and you're probably good to go, right? Right, and it's not like this refer-a-friend system is not going to be around after, yeah. like, a month. Or yeah, at it's, least it's... I, I have not 
it's like to believe yeah it's gonna be here like i imagine they'll probably update it as the game goes if if anything it's gonna be like the recruiter friend system that was in world of warcraft oh (laughs) you you mean the recruiter friend system that's in every single mmo known to man yeah you mean that system yeah Yeah. so people are (laughs) people are upset and people think that if something is not in directly in favor of them that it is malicious it was a malicious decision to screw you over because Bungie hates you. And that's just so ridiculous to me. It's like bad things or inconvenient things can happen without being malicious. It's just a bad thing happened. Oh, I don't get well. this one at all. It's, I don't understand it's why people are bad upset. timing. There, there's uh, also some other upset stuff. They're because they can't get um, access. To it's, it. it's why, but they the can't get access it's to it. All the they got to do is... You know, find well, a friend maybe who's maybe Destiny. they don't have any more friends who want to get into Destiny, or you know, they That's... don't know anyone who wants to get into Destiny at all. But like you said, there are plenty of other ways to go and find someone to to, mm-hmm. to do this stuff. But it's just like I well, when I first heard about this, you know, I had spent over two grand getting people into Destiny. I'm just like, okay, cool. It's some bonus rewards. It's a emblem I'm probably going to use for a day. It's a shader I will probably never use. Sparrow's kind of cool looking. Couple of emotes. All right. Like, I just don't think the rewards are enough to get that angry about it. Now, let me share my opinion on the rewards. I think the shader is amazing. Gray, gray, black combo. The Sparrow, this current iteration, is nearly invincible. That's a bug. uh, That's a bug. It's a bug, bug. I know. (laughs) But right now, it's freaking awesome. It's super fast. Without, It's as fast as the, the Raid Sparrow's. But it doesn't blow up when you're going somewhere. It doesn't, the boost won't make you blow up. Dancing and the high five. I can understand why people are a little upset because they, I would really want it. The, the, we had a whole set of emotes that cost money and now uh, these emotes are coming out. So people are valuing them. And I think that's the reason why there's so much rumble is that we've already, long term uh, veterans have already got all their friends in. Like we've tapped the resource of convincing people that they should play Destiny. So now, we either have to go find a new person and or spend a new copy on a game and uh, and do it that way. I think that's that's the reasoning why people are angry about it. Right. And but I just I think the level of anger is too much considering what the rewards are. Sure. Like, yeah. I mean, to Pope Air, they're super awesome and cool and, and they're great. Someone like me, I'm just like, OK, it's it's another shader. You know, I already have the, the year one VIP shader, which is pretty close. The emblem is, you know, I like this the emblems that I got right now. The sparrow, the sparrow, I don't really care about too much. The emotes, you know, I got plenty of emotes already that I don't use. These are just two more that are just going to probably sit in my vault. And uh, the sword, I mean, my vault has probably 65 weapons in it and it'll just be <laughs> clogging up space. Yeah. So that that's my perspective, which I understand is not everyone else's perspective. They're just designed to be a bonus. You know, they're not designed to be like this thing that's on sale like the emotes are or anything like that. It's just an extra cool thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like it's not Bungie saying, hey, refer a friend system, go market our game for us now. All you haha, free marketing. Like, it's not that. It's just like, oh, you and your buddy, you got Destiny. You were playing. He didn't. He was playing. You didn't. You getting it for the holidays. Oh, that's, that's cool. That's cool. Here's a, here's a couple of quests, you know, check out this emblem for you. Some cool stuff for you. Thanks for playing Destiny. Mm-hmm. That That's what I feel like it's supposed to be. You can put your outrage towards something considerably more uh, controversial, I think. Mm-hmm. I, I see the whole program as being fairly positive. You know, you're, you're going to get veteran players helping out new players. That's a good experience. Uh, you're going to get veteran players who just want the reward going looking for new newer players. And hopefully, you know, maybe, you know, worst case scenario is you got two people just helping each other out for a little while. Best case scenario, you actually get two people who make friends and, you know, end up playing together for a while. You know, yeah. everybody's getting rewards out of it. That's great. You know, if I, I really don't see a downside here. I just don't. I can understand being a little bitter, I guess, if you just, you know, got your friend to play Destiny and, you know, now he's raid level. So you're kind of, you know, now you're out of this program. But... I would I would the, bet that if you go to LFG right now, you can find people to do this with if you really yeah. just about the and rewards. 
And I'm sure, like, they're going to be improving on the system. Like, this is just the first iteration. They might, mm-hmm. you know, add some extra rules that make it a little more flexible in the future. This is just the first thing that they're trying. So mm-hmm. they're trying to see what's going to work and what's not going to work. There's, mm-hmm. uh, there is also yeah. some other, some of the other things, uh, as far as controversy yeah. goes. We had, uh, yeah. like, in the original post about it, uh, I think Deej said something along the lines of, we're going to introduce something to help out. Um, the Sherpas amongst the community. Oh my god! And yeah. so that was a very poor choice of words uh, in that in that update. It was, yeah, it was a poor choice of words, but it was also the community taking it very, very, very literally. Yeah, yeah I think as well. So I think you know he he could have chosen a, a better word because everyone kind of understands like oh Sherpa is like raid Sherpa, and you know, but at the same time the community can be like okay. You know, we we know what you're trying to say, not like literal Sherpa. Mm-hmm. I I do completely understand the frustration of everyone that's that maybe they just they just don't have a lot of friends to play the game with. Yeah, but this is a or, perfect opportunity to make new friends. Yeah, and I understand that too. It's a uh, see part of the problem uh, though is it's because it's the timing, the timing with just, with the yeah. veteran people right now. With us that have consumed the content, yeah, we're we also expecting right now new. that yeah, we're, we're we're expecting some sort of DLC drop. Yeah, we're expecting some a DLC sort of announcement, about not it. a and and the yeah. fact that this is in place of that announcement is making those people rile their skin, and that's why. Is this under your feathers? It sounds like it's a little bit under your feathers, Dafty. <laughs> like it does. It, <laughs> no, it sounds I mean, like it sounds like you're a little bitter about this. Uh, I'm not bitter about it. I I just I see both sides. I'm fifty fifty. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I can yeah. see why it's I, kind of a I slap can see in the both face. sides. I can, you know, I'm I'm sure we're all Jones in for some some new uh, for some leaks, mm-hmm. you know, yes. some content oh, that yeah. we will be like, we're like, no, don't upload it to YouTube. But then secretly we'll be like, oh, new stuff. <laughs> um, and I'm sure we're gonna see we're gonna see some stuff at PlayStation Experience. Yeah. So you know, we're all Jones in for Which, like, what's the new thing? What's coming on the horizon? Which I, um, well, I can actually say that, yeah, I'll, I'll be a PlayStation experience. Yay. Yeah, same. Yay. Yay. So, like, but it's it's not like there's no new stuff coming forever. Like, people think it's like, okay, we're released the Taken King. See you next year. Like, no, there, more stuff's coming. Yeah. It's But it would just be nice if they dropped, like, a little bit of a hint other than, like, hey, we'll be a PlayStation experience. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. If they'd been releasing news about the next DLC, like, in the last few weeks, they'd be completely overshadowed by, you know, the release of Black Ops 3, Fallout 4, like, all these new hot games coming out. You know, trying to get the message out about your DLC is going to be a little harder. If they would just wait for, you know, people are going to be playing Fallout 4 for a few weeks, and then, you know, they'll finish the campaign, they'll be looking for the next thing, and then you you drop, you know, DLC for Destiny, I think you're going to find a much more hungry audience at that point. Totally agree. Agreed. Much more receptive audience too to the to the new information that's coming. It's not just going to be oh, couldn't, don't don't care playing Fallout. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about challenge mode. You guys want to talk about challenge mode? I, so, we I'll talk, talk about challenge mode. Oh, I'm D- dying. I think Dado one. really wanted to talk about challenge mode, especially I mean, the one little piece of information that we saw in the in the weekly oh, update. Yeah. Sorry to the people who used the the one orb shot yeah. little uh, <laughs> jab there. Yeah, I hope that. The, the challenge mode for Golgoroth is more than, like, hey, do the fight, like, how we thought you were going to do it, but now you have to this time. Like, I hope it's more than use all the orbs or something yeah. like that, you know? Holtzman, I, I know you and I, like, chatted about, uh, the you tablet know, how, how could stuff, they fix yeah. it? Like, orb drop and it healed, or, oh, yeah. or you said, oh, no, it added to the Totem of Ruin yeah, or something like, like that? Any, any of orb ruin. that isn't detonated at the end, at when he's lost his gaze will be added to the uh, Tablet of Ruin. Because if you do the one orb strat, you kind of bail on all the curse thralls that are down there, and then you kill them later. Well, mm-hmm. what if Golgoroth ate the curse thralls and then he he healed? That would be fun. Yeah, yeah. There's there's a lot you could you could kind of finagle with it. The challenge modes are a very very welcome addition. Mm-hmm. It's something I've been I've been hoping for, and I'm glad they kind of built the fights the way that they did, where they started with hard mode or maybe even challenge mode, um, and then kind of reduced it down. Mm-hmm. I mean. I think the most obvious challenge mode for War Priest is just going to be they're going to gate his health every 25%, and you're just going to have to fight him at full power. Yeah, so it's going to really like, matter about which order that you do it in to have the easiest right. of time. So um, in, the, in the weekly update, they they kind of they describe it a little bit. They say early in December, one of the King's Fall bosses will offer their challenge each week. You'll see which boss when you select the raid in the director, and you can do it in normal mode or hard mode. 
I think it's interesting that you're going to be able to see which boss it is. There's going to be like a skull, just like in a nightfall, that indicates, you know, which boss it is. I wonder if it will indicate a modifier, too, or if it'll just be up to you to figure it out. I think it'll be up to you to figure it out. They say it's up to us. Oh, they say it it is up to us? Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. They're not going to tell us. They want us to figure out what the challenge is. Well, the question, though, is is there multiple challenges per boss? That'd be cool. Because that would be it, awesome. It would be great. I'm only anticipating one yeah. challenge per boss, um, but it would be very, very cool to have multiple challenges. I just found it interesting that there's challenges for normal and hard, because then, you know, my my uh, my War Priest guess, where you have to fight him at full power, that kind of goes out the window, um, because he doesn't, like, gain extra powers in, right in normal. normal mode. Yeah. So not, now I'm just like, well... Are both challenges the same? Is there a challenge for normal and then a challenge for hard? I really hope it's not you something know. that's really easy. Like, uh, you have to do the sequencing perfectly every time. It's like, well, we do that every time. Maybe yeah. you have to get <laughs> off them in the same order. You have to get off them in a specific order as well once you get mm-hmm. on them. There you go. No, I finished. It, maybe. I did it. I, I did it. I hope not. <laughs> I hope. I want my ass to get kicked on these, on these challenge modes. You know, I'm always... I'm always looking to get my ass kicked for for anything hard mode, anything challenge yo, you, mode. Yo, man, next time we'll, we'll be at PlayStation Experience. I can help you out with that. Oh, <laughs> hey, fight me, IRL. I'll fight you. Yeah. I'll pay. That's a pay per view right there. <laughs> that, that's actually the capture event this year. Oh yeah. yes, yes. Uh, yeah, we're going to. Uh... <laughs> no, but uh, for for Golgroth, you know, they're they're obviously trying to do something around using all the orbs. Um, Oryx is a complete mystery to me. I had no idea what they were going to do for the hard mode. Mm-hmm. I got no idea what they're going to do for the challenge mode. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely not a clue. Melee only. That's my guess. Melee only. <laughs> Melee, yeah. You got to go punch him in the stomach. Oh, oh Jesus. <laughs> He's like, ow. Quit it, guys. You got a kidney shot him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what do you yeah, think the I rewards got... will be? Because they say that they work on both normal and hard mode and offer rewards to match. So that would indicate that there's different rewards for normal and hard mode, you think? Probably. Potentially. Uh, I mean, those emblems uh, are obviously going to be one thing. The ship? 320 artifacts, I think. Yeah. I'm... Or 310 yeah. plus artifacts are going to be the reward. Maybe, like, it'll be 310 plus for normal, and then they'll just give you a 320 for hard. Oh, could be, be a nice. thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, maybe it'll, it'll roll it. Uh, it'll, maybe it'll be like a King's Fall artifact where it has like, you know, normal rolls 310 or 300, 310, and then hard is 310 to 320. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's like the one thing that's missing. Everyone's been asking, where's the 320 artifacts? Where's the think 320? This is like, yep. yeah, that ship you know, too, that, that raid chance. ship that nobody's raid been ship, able to yeah. get, right? Oh, yeah, raid ship for probably for Oryx or something. Mm-hmm. Well, and or maybe also, for completing all of them. Also, mm-hmm. what, about, oh, yeah. what about a raid exotic? I mean, I know Touch of Malice, but Touch of Malice was a raid mm-hmm. tool. It's not really Very the true. end result of getting and, through the raid. And the last, uh, the last three fragments come from the challenge modes, right? Mm-hmm. And we don't, we have absolutely no idea what happens when you get all uh, fifty of them. So there you could go. be something there as well. I mean, that game, for, that game form article said yeah. we had to collect fifty fragments to get a, get an exotic, right? I think right? you get sure. a you get a refer a friend. You get thorn you <laughs> yeah, you, get, oh, okay. you have to oh, so you have god. to refer a friend to start the exotic quest. That's what it is. Yeah. Oh my god. Don't even just Oh my god. Yeah, no, but I'm I'm excited to see how they how they kind of ramp it up. I thought hard mode was a decent step up from from normal mode. I thought I mean obviously it was done better than Crotus End or Vault yeah. of Glass was because they yeah. designed them that way. Mm-hmm. But I still think it'd be a little bit a little bit harder. I thought the Oryx fight funny. itself was kind of perfectly balanced for hard mode, at least until you get to, like, 312, 313. Like, it feels yeah. hard. Yeah. You know, you feel like you're in danger all the time. The raid getting up to that point didn't really feel that much harder. We didn't know. My group going through did not know that War Priest had any changes because we killed him in yeah. one damage cycle. <laughs> yeah. So we just didn't even know that he had changes. Um Golgoroth, we figured that out pretty quick. And that was a fun mechanic, but it really awesome. didn't make it <laughs> yeah. too much harder. No, but it's awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, it is super, super awesome. Oryx was hard at the very start because there was a bigger jump in light yeah, it, that you had to conquer. Yeah, yeah. like that that was a, that was my big gripe with King's Fall Hard Mode was that it didn't feel like hard mode until you actually got to Oryx. And that was because the, del- the delta scaling actually went up enough for it to matter there. Mm-hmm. Like, I was very surprised when War Priest didn't have any extra health. Mm-hmm. Like, he had no extra health at all. I was mm-hmm. like, isn't that kind of like a staple yeah. <laughs> for a lot of hard mode stuff? It's just right. like you you just increase the health I, a little I, bit. I know we gripe about it a lot, but 
Yeah, I was expecting it. At yeah, the same it's time. weird. It's weird when it's gone. Exactly. I was expecting it as well. Yeah. I'm gonna complain I'm just... about it, but don't take it away. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, I I don't really complain about that much. It's it, it's something it's something I'm used to being from MMO land. Yeah. It's just like the boss gonna the boss gonna get a health increase. Like that's just gonna happen. Um, mm-hmm. I'm glad that they uh didn't just like litter major enemies everywhere. Mm-hmm. I was very happy about that. Or majors. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So that was uh that was a refreshing change of pace from uh from Prison of Elders and Crota's End for sure. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, Crota's End with all those uh those yellow health bar knights at the beginning. If you were <laughs> wiping frequently, you just had to kill those guys over and over and mm-hmm. over again. Yeah. Was uh it's a good change they made, King's Fall. Yeah, definitely, definitely glad. I hope they continue that level of design process too, because it definitely shows. And once you're actually doing the content, it 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 feel it just feels right. I really do hope though that the challenge modes actually add some sort of mechanic that we're we're not aware of. Like I would love yeah, I'd, if I'd there be, was maybe I'd be stuck with that as well. I'd love yeah. if maybe there was a burn that they added, or they started adding some nightfall modifiers, like grounded. I don't know something something to change it up and something unique to the raid itself. That mm-hmm. that would be incredible. I feel like that would yeah. really make a make it fresh. This might be their way of trying it out because, as much mm-hmm. as we like adding modifiers, it's a hell of a lot cooler to add a new actual mechanic to the fight in the form mm-hmm. to to make it more difficult Agreed. than yeah. just oh yeah, your radar is disabled or oh, now that now solar burn and everything does solar damage. Have fun like that. Yeah, that I think if that was the challenge mode, that would be a very very big disappointment, or so, I would be very disappointed. I, I like I like the nightfall. Or I used to like the nightfall. It's kind of gotten old for me at this point. But I like when you get that special set of modifiers that actually makes it more difficult. Uh, and I like that about the kind of the first round of Prison of Elders when we first were discovering the Prison of Elders and we were seeing all the modifiers for the first time and trying to figure mm-hmm. out how to how to accomplish our tasks with those modifiers in place. I thought it was fun. But once you've seen them all and once you've kind of completed every mission with each modifier, it kind of just becomes routine. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, I mean that that, but that's gonna happen with every True single enough. thing in the game. True now. enough. You know, eventually it's just gonna be like, okay, just, let's just beast our way through it. And... I like what Prison of Elders has like done to some of the things in uh, in Destiny because it it felt like a big experiment for the most part. Well, how how will players react to this? Well, will they enjoy it? What what parts will they enjoy it? Then we saw Court of Oryx, which was a much it's a much more refined version of prison of elders you have you have boss you have loot there's no none of that in between crap that comes out it was it was the idea of prison elders was really exciting Mm -hmm. it was it was like oh a nightfall that changes every time you go in there it's gonna be really awesome big boss to fight and the execution just was really tedious when you go in there Mm -hmm. you just did not want to do it after a couple weeks Mm -hmm. that was the problem with it Mm -hmm. sounds about right especially when the the modifiers didn't actually change at all from week to week. Yeah. Oh, the level, well, the level 35 down. never changed. Yeah. 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 It's always the same, except for skull loss. Yeah, skull, like skulls would change. E- even the level 32 and 34, they would just rotate. They would rotate. That felt cheap. The only thing that truly delivered on the, the randomness of the experience that, that we were promised was the level 28 version. I, I'll go in there from time to time. It's a great source of moats and strange coins if you ever need to. Do you think they're ever going to bring it back? Like recycle that content. Recycle Prison of Elders. I hope not. Yeah. What if they recycled it with like with what we would want an actual fresh feel? I'm not opposed to to bringing back content as long as it's fun. You uh-huh. know, if it was fun, I don't, I don't really care if they if they wanted to bring back Prison of Elders and improved it. And the same goes for Vault the Glass Curtis End. If they wanted to bring it back, sure. I guess I understand why they don't. It's because, you know, they, they want to work on new stuff as opposed to bringing back the old stuff. As long as it's fun, Just, I really don't care you, what we get. You could imagine, though, uh, Vault of Glass 2 and people getting excited for it. Like, they could just say Vault of Glass 2. And, like, yeah. you'd be excited for Aliens it, Vault of Glass pitch. was awesome. But if they said Prison of <laughs> Elders 2, if they said Prison of Elders 2, you'd be like, ah. Uh, well, that's because, yeah, like, true. Prison had a much more negative uh, relationship. Right. Or pe- people think of it in, in a much more negative way than they did something like Vault of Glass. Right, so, yeah. Uh, or even Crow's End, so. But, you know, I'd, I'd still play it, and I would judge it independently. As, and if as long as it was fun, hey, good. Not me. Fun. I've already cool. judged it. 
<laughs> you, you got the right. you've got the video waiting to go up. You're just waiting for it yeah, to come out. I a book match cover. I'll have that video up tomorrow. <laughs> Here's what I don't like about Prison Elders too. It's, Where Bungie went It's just wrong. tough bringing back old stuff because I feel like they don't win either way. You know, yeah. it's like if you bring back old stuff, like oh, Bungie's just recycling old content. Can't think of anything new. Mm-hmm. And then if they don't bring it back, like what the hell? You're wasting all this old content that was so good. Like. They they don't win. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, there's sometimes they do it. I think it's everybody likes it. Like they they brought back the uh, Vault of Glass for the No Time to Explain quest. I think everybody liked that. Yeah. Or, well, they, they. I think everyone liked it as like a one time thing. Like, oh, we get yeah. to reminisce. We get to go through it. Like, if you brought it back like three times a week. Yeah. Uh, not so maybe much. Maybe not as much <laughs> of a reception. Um, but you know, we don't we don't know for sure. Since it is Thanksgiving, I feel like we should do something that's appropriate for it being Thanksgiving. Personally, myself, I'm just thankful that I have one of the best jobs in the world where even though it seems like I just constantly complain about shit uh, in a public forum, it's kind (laughs) of awesome to play video games and be part of a really cool community, even though you guys need to kind of tone it down about some of your complaining. (laughs) You know, I love it. I'm just eternally grateful for every single fan out there that led us to to this position that we're currently in it sure beats the hell out of working 13 hours a day it's fucking target set. or target you sound better um <laughs> no don't know, don't I, get him on the target <laughs> we, we already okay. did that in one of the I other won't, podcasts um yeah you know i i used to work 13 hours a day on on film sets you know six six seven days a week for basically nothing and now i get to set my own schedule you know, I got a lot of fans. I get to do something that's, you know, like you said, I might complain about it a lot. I might be panicking every Saturday night because I don't have any video ideas. But end of the day, it beats the hell out of 99% of the jobs out there. Yep. And uh, it's certainly certainly a very interesting experience to uh, to be a part of it. You know, I never thought of myself as being a guy who was capable of having any sort of uh, famousness. And yet here I am. Very, very interesting life experience. And I'm, I'm very thankful for it that, that it came around, especially at the time that it did. Otherwise, I might be in a little bit of life trouble. <laughs> you, you, to say the least. you never really realize it, too, as a YouTuber, that you actually have, like, you know, you, you help people. People who yeah, care about there's you. There's people who care about it. Like, I, when I was at the Red Bull event, that's only the second time that I've ever really met with people who are, you know, like, subscribers or people who, you know, follow you in any way. And it was just really really fucking cool to just have people genuinely interested in what you do and then them being like really happy that you know you make videos for a, a game that they really love it's most Uber, mo- YouTubers youtubers <laughs> they make memories out of those negative experiences like you know you can have a hundred people you know, saying nice things in in a twitch chat and then one person comes along and says something dumb and then that you just focus on that and it's like you don't take in enough of the of all the positive things that people are saying. And I, that's definitely happened to me where I just, you know, I know that there's thousands of people out there who like what I do, but then there's that few little bunch of people that I, that I choose to focus my energy on okay, for whatever reason, uh, vengeance. Sure. Why not? And it's like, that's no, that yeah, makes dad, it feel dad, like I'll be there hopeless. in a minute. I'll be there in a minute. Dad, someone's wrong on the internet. I'll yeah. be right back. You know, you don't you don't take enough time to to focus on all the positive energy that that might be going out. It feels like we're always angry all the time. Yeah, this is like we, if you ever tune like into we're a constantly chat, constantly fighting. Oh my god! Like w- when we were doing the uh, when Pope, you and I were doing the uh, refer friend thing on Twitch. You were like, why is Patrick so salty today? And it's like, I because t- question today. <laughs> this is my life. <laughs> It's overall we we very much enjoy what we mm. do. Yeah. Everyone, I, I, th- I think I speak for everyone. I think that Absolutely. that that falls in line with something that I really am thankful for, and it's been my opportunity to. I work in schools, and I I enjoy giving back in that arena, helping kids. But what my role here in this community has been to get people together and help um, charities and help the community express themselves that way. And it's been a great experience for me over this last year and a half to be able to have that voice and be able to connect people with maybe their first time 
gift giving or to become involved in the community in some way. And I get a lot of feedback like that, that, hey, I never really thought of myself doing this before. I'm really thankful for that. That is, it's amazing. Yeah. It's pretty hard not to be thankful over the community because ultimately Bungie made a really great game and we all enjoy it. But the fact that we're playing it is because of the community. And for me, uh, it's being thankful over the fact that people are interested in what I'm doing because <laughs> it's an amazing experience. I mean, you get to see people respond and react both on Twitch and YouTube. And yeah, you just got, you just got, uh, you, you have built quite a following on uh, Twitch too yourself, Taffy. Like you have a, uh, mm-hmm. you got, you got the subscriber yeah. option on your personal, on your personal. Yeah. Channel. Just recently, just recently that crossed Congrats, over. Dude. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. That was really awesome. It's great because I don't play destiny on my personal channel. Mm-hmm. I only play destiny on planet destiny, uh, Twitch channel. Mm hmm. And that that's been awesome to see people just interested in what I'm doing in gaming in the gaming world in general, mm-hmm. and to see that kind of response and that support. And it's the community 100 percent that I'm thankful for, both the good and bad, because you can't have just all bright. You can't just have a continuous sunny day all the time. You have to have the 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 highs and lows with it, and that's what creates an interesting community. And that's also what creates opinions and people to push and pull on that uh, that inspire new things. Yeah. The community for me made year one of Destiny, right? That's like that's what pulled me in to begin with. I was playing mm-hmm. I was playing Call of Duty and fine with Call of Duty and I started playing a game called Destiny and I was like, Holy cow, this game is super fun and then I go on, you know, Reddit and I start watching Dado's videos and I'm I got really into this game and it was really cool to like get pulled into the community and then start making friends inside Destiny itself. I now have friends inside Destiny that I made through Destiny. These guys have my phone number. I never made any friends in Call of Duty that I get my phone number too. I can tell you that. <laughs> but in you know in Destiny, man, I've like got real friends. I got the Milk House Clan. You know, we play Trials of Osiris. It feels like our own little MLG event that we get to play in. You know, it's just you know the the community and like small groups of friends and like you know meeting the Planet Destiny guys and doing the podcast every week with you guys is like a huge like highlight of my week. You know doing the King's Fall Raid World's First Runs with you guys it was amazing. You know, it's like... That was a lot of fun. The community is, to me, what makes this game. Speaking of the raid and us doing so, should we should we get together and do another one of those events for Challenge Mode and have to do another 12-hour well. stream? <laughs> because God knows, like... Guys, we gotta get we gotta get these we gotta get these streams under twelve hours when we're doing when we're trying to clear Seriously. something for the first time. They are a little draining. <laughs> They're a little draining. A little. Oh boy. Yeah, I, I think that is one thing that I've realized on Twitch. I, I admire people that can do twenty four hour streams, mm-hmm. but I don't think I'll ever be able to do a twenty four hour stream. <laughs> I'm just not built. I need to have my yeah. sleep. More of a hit it and quit it kind of en- guy, right? I don't have the energy. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> So when when uh, Patrick brought up this topic for our conversation today, I, I broke it down into three things. Things we are thankful f- that no longer exist. So um, <laughs> I'm really glad that thorn and bolt, thorn bolt combinations, the thorn in general is gone. Here, I'm, here. I'm, I'm really glad I no longer have to do skull loss with viewers. I, just like, <laughs> and just. <laughs> Not because of skull loss or anything. No, skull loss is horrible. Uh, cheesing. I'm really glad that we can't cheese the raid. Um, That's true. I'm yeah. I'm really glad that network uh, pl- unplugging your network cable's gone. I'm um, sad about that. Glad blink shotgunning is pretty much gone. <laughs> um, for is the it, most part, it's getting it there. Is it, it's get, is it though? It's, it, it's almost there. I'm glad final round is out. I'm glad Gallahorn's gone. And, jeez, uh, jeez, Pope, you're just you're, you're not going to really be gl- truly just, happy until everything's gone, aren't I'm you? I'm really <laughs> glad that we the the year one story is also gone, or the lack thereof. So. <laughs> mm-hmm. The, the thing I'll say about G-Horn is, like, someone someone actually uh, made a very good point about G-Horn to me the other day, was that while I'm sad, or I'm, I'm not sad that G-Horn is gone, I was thankful for the legacy it made for the game. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it made, it it had insane community hype, and especially in year one, um, and it's just, like, a thing that people went berserk for, and I think that was that kind of response to something you know, beyond the weapons, like, in-game potential and all that stuff 
was something that was very, very good for the game. Mm -hmm. It's so well set up for a triumphant return, too. Oh, yes. That'll be cool. So would you guys add anything to that list of things that you're glad are gone? You're thankful that are gone? I I respond well to your uh, running people through the uh, Skolas fight, man. That was tough. Running subscribers through the Skolas fight was rotten. (laughs) There was that uh, emblem, right, for completing the... What was it called? The Moments of Triumph. Moments of Triumph. And yep. so people needed skull loss to be done. And I helped a couple friends with that. And those were some of the most worse than any raid. I feel like I mm-hmm. struggled with skull loss. Doing that fight with um, two people is really difficult. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't think it was as bad. I don't know. Maybe I had a lucky streak. I had one day where we were helping people with uh, with moments, trying, me and the math class dudes. And so what we would do is it would be me and two other people running up to Skolas. Mm-hmm. Then we would bring someone in, have do the Skolas fight. And I think we one-shotted it every time. And then that person would leave. We'd bring back in another math class person. And we'd go up to Skolas and keep doing it like that. And that wasn't nearly as bad. It, it took a while. It sounds like a good idea. Yeah, that, it took a that, while that to do, <laughs> but it, it was not nearly as bad That's as I a think. Much your better idea than what we been. did because I was usually like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's get, like two two guys never been through. Yeah, let's do it. And I love every single person that I ran through there. But <laughs> if, when I start out a stream and I have three hours, I usually want to get two people. Th- I usually want to get like two groups through, not just yeah. one. <laughs> it's yeah. nothing against yeah. those guys. It's just like those fights were really difficult to pick up on. The no, only they, time they I did punishing. it, I had a guy who I could rely on as my teammate, and then we decided to just bring in a subscriber, and we'd run him through the whole thing, and he didn't have a mic. Oh, no. Oh, oh so no. So it was all, it was okay until we got to the Skolas fight, and then, you know, we had to deal with the taint of Skolas, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. which is terrifying. I mean, <laughs> the taint of the taint Skolas. Of Skolas. <laughs> That's right. something I'm glad I don't have to say every single time oh, on stream. I got, I, got the the taint. Taint. So I got the taint. When he got the taint, we told him, okay, you have to dance so that we know when to take it from you. Oh, <laughs> so it my was God. like you really had to focus on that bottom left hand side oh, of the man. screen. It was difficult. We got it done, but it was difficult. I imagine. Oh, <laughs> boy. Well, the next, the next list is uh, things we are thankful existed. So these are the things that I'm really happy um, existed in Destiny. And um, in my time, overall, the Taken King. I'm really glad. The Taken King came about, and it is a thing, and it changed around the game for me. I'm super thankful for Kate Six having a personality. Mm -hmm. And um, Exotic Scores in the seventh column, for me, being part of the seventh column playtesting was a huge highlight for me. I'm honestly really thankful for all the things that you said you like weren't thankful for or you're thankful that are gone. I'm very thankful that those existed, so we have something to base all of our complaints off of. So you can pull the back in my day card. Yeah, like, oh, yeah. Look, back in my day, we had to deal with people firing we, two rounds off into the dirt and then hitting you with one shot. Just saying. We are all proud owners of the year one back in my day mm-hmm. card. Oh, yes. We can play that whenever we no want. No matter so which way you look at that player, card, huh? it looks like you're going up a hill on it. <laughs> and it's very snowy. And so we always leave the conversation of thankfulness as to what we'll be thankful will not be here next year. Sunbreakers. I started off with my list of shotguns <laughs> and solar hammer titans. Pope, what the hell, I man? The luck- I thought you were with me on this solar oh, titan, Oh, no. Man. Come on, no man. No way, Briar. <laughs> Come on. I'm sorry, man. Who, that who is the appropriate that such, response. Such a noise would instill such fear in everybody. Just <laughs> clink. And run! then somebody. Oh, is, my God, run. Somebody in the chat goes. So somebody. In, there's always that troll in your, your team who drops their hammer and doesn't say it's yours. You yeah. Know? <laughs> Five seconds later. Oh, it's me. Oh, it's me. And I, oh, thanks. Yeah. I could have used that information. Yeah, that's good. I, could, I already ran myself off the side of the map so they couldn't get any points from me. <laughs> I was just going to stay dead. <laughs> Speaking of Sunbreakers, we went into Iron Banner the other day as five Sunbreakers and one Golden Gun. And we just chained Sunbreakers. So as soon as 2,500 points hit, that was about when we started getting the Super. And it was just awful. It was just stupid. I felt bad. Yeah. I felt bad every time that we did it. Just Super. Oh, who's next? You Super. didn't feel that. Who's next? Bad. Super. No, I yeah. felt bad, man. I felt no, bad because it'll be getting slapped it was, in December. Probably it was one after the other, and we did it for several games. We even went, went up a good uh, against a good team that had some decent counters to it, and it didn't matter. It did not matter. We still just killed them. Do you guys remember the five Titan 
defender bubbles and one golden gun. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I sure do. <laughs> yeah. I, I, that's a, I think that's a lot lamer. Yeah, though. <laughs> oh, well, it's, it's so passive lame, yeah. and lame. Well, you just bubble up in the middle and just keep uh, trading off bubbles while the golden gun runs around and kills people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. which is which is probably maybe one of the catalysts that caused them to slightly change the uh, the way orbs of light work in Taken King now. Yes. Yeah, because mm-hmm. you yeah. notice the bigger orbs get you a lot, the super small ones get you barely anything. Have you guys noticed a trend that Titan supers change the meta of the game? I mean, um, I mean, look at the look at the Titans. They, I think they keep trying to make them relevant, but they don't know. I mean, it's just they're just either not effective or extremely too powerful right yeah oh, well, I, I mean that's the reason why i think no one's going to be happy with sunbreaker titan nerfs until sunbreaker titans are just in a dumpster in like the back <laughs> of bungie studios <laughs> that's the only way people are going to be happy um just take cauterize off you are now defender yeah. titans but you're you use flames instead that's it by the way you no yeah. longer have suppression grenades wow. <laughs> 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 they literally gave the defen- the the sun the, the the striker titan or the um the flame titan uh every good thing like the solar gren- the the fusion even, grenades even I the mean time even the time it takes like twenty uh twenty six plus seconds to fade away. So pe- people complain about that, but then no one complains about how Stormcaller barely uses any energy when it's used and lasts. What three seconds? That's fear? right, Dado. You tell him, Dado. You tell him, Dado. <laughs> I, I, wanna, I just want to lay that out for all the complaints that Sunbreaker has. At least when you throw a hammer, it costs you a good chunk of energy, and the sun charge thing takes a lot of energy as well. Uh, provided that you actually hit to, someone, to, if you actually hit someone, it takes like half your bar. To be fair, um, the uh, the 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 storm caller, like you have to spec for that to last that long, and you have to have you know grenade and melee yep. all the way up. But that's not very, very true. Yep. Not very difficult to do, truthfully. And there's not a hell of a Very lot. Very true that you do have to spec for there's it. Not well, a hell of a lot. Even if you don't spec for it, it does last a pretty long time. Right, but as a, as a stormcaller, when you kill someone, do you get your your health back? Uh, you don't. But if you use it correctly, you will end up killing everyone, regardless. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, the yeah, Titan, you, you the can Titan still get getting headshot, one though. kill and getting <laughs> their health all the way back is 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 pretty broken. Cauterize yeah. and, being and taken requiring out. two uh, and requiring a headshot and a body shot from a sniper. That's just Come on, come on! I think if they bring that down, a lot of complaints will go away. Mm-hmm. Sure, That's if how they I feel. just bring it back, to, if if they bring it to fifty, mm-hmm. um, arm reduction instead of fifty-five, it doesn't seem like it would be that that much. It's just five percent, yeah. but like that five percent makes so much of a difference. It's the That's best five percent. So when I was when I was doing my <laughs> tests, I was like, "Wow, this is really only five percent more more armor," and yet it made just a world of difference. I thought it was like something like ten or fifteen percent. I was like. It's gotta be. It's gotta be a lot, right? Nope. It's like five percent. It's crazy. I didn't know it was that little. Yeah, it's only five percent. Same as radiant skin. Wow. But you can't. uh, No one can't snipe a. You can't snipe a titan at the headshot. So yeah. Well, you can't. With a black spindle, you can. (laughs) And you tell him, Briar. (laughs) (laughs) With one one specific sniper (laughs) rifle. Once you get good. Yeah. I guess I just need to get good. You're right. <laughs> which which we do know that that will be coming in the December update because where they said in the next I think it was like in the December update update we will be discussing or we will be going over the weapon and class balances coming. Cauterize now extends your super by 15 seconds for every kill. Killing it. Sweet. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I'm, I mean, I'm I'm fine with that. I'm actually gathering <laughs> clips right now for when uh, yeah. for when Sunbreakers get nerfed, and I want to do like a save the Sunbreakers commercial. Nice. <laughs> so I already have I already have a Reaper, and I have two, or I have a back to back Phantom Metal uh, clip as well, which I'm sure will make a lot of people happy. For just <laughs> thirty nine cents a day, you can save a Sunbreaker Titan. <laughs> yeah, I, yes, I, I was with you, Twitter Briar. questions. Yeah, yeah, we can answer yeah, that. Uh, Chicken Lord's <laughs> question. Lord Send me great. his uh, foot shavings so I can put them in tea bags. Oh, Jesus, foot shaving? <laughs> what? Yeah, that's what? That's what he wants. <laughs> I don't shave my feet. It's Wait, like oh, is he talking shavings. about like the top of your foot shaving the hair off the top of your foot? I, I thought, thought he was, he was talking, talking about, about skin, skin off the skin bottom. Flakes. Flakes. I thought I thought he was talking about Either way, either way, it's disgusting. I, those, are, those are nothing I I save or maintain. I wash my feet. That's about it. Okay. 
Yeah, there's maybe like three strands. No. So sorry, I got Ovid. 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 Let's get to something really serious here. Henry mm-hmm. Delorosa asks, can Datto tell Bungie to fix assist on snipes and fix fusions? Datto, can you do this? I'm on it. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much. <laughs> the answer is yes. <laughs> get Deej on the phone here. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I got Gallahorn nerf. Uh, apparently, I'm also getting shotguns yeah, you, nerf. You got shotguns yes. nerf. That's also my fault. That's, so you're welcome. You're, you know, you're killing it. You. Yep. That was killing it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm doing a lot out here. You got doors you know? added to uh, fights too. If you if you really look at uh, King's Fall, there's doors on all those fights, man. Oh yeah, you can't uh, can't go through. Uh, can't go backwards uh, during War Priest mm-hmm. or can't or go Golgoroth. Or Golgoroth. Or, or, GG, you're Dada. welcome, community. <laughs> Agent Oros, Agent Orange says, "What archetypes of guns should we be uh, stocking up on before the next patch?" Good question. Zalo Supercell hmm. type auto rifles, like mm-hmm. that that class. They're getting an eight percent buff in damage. Since their stability is kind of like a little wobbly, I think it'll probably be end up being okay. Um, and like pulses are really not getting hit as hard as I think everyone thinks they are going to get hit. So they'll still be able to compete with auto rifles, you know, in auto rifle range. But that is like the one archetype where I feel like it has, it does have the most potential. Mm-hmm. And there was actually a Zaranea D with crowd oh, control yes. and counterbalance from, uh, from Arms Day mm-hmm. that was just recently delivered. Um, which is like the only thing I, yeah, that was the only pick thing up. worth picking up this week. Yeah. Um, but I think those do have potential. Zalo is probably going to get a nice little boost from that. Um, the, the, the chain damage on Zalo is very underrated. It's two shots worth of, of bonus damage if there's another target next to your main target mm-hmm. or close enough to hit that chain. Um, so I, I, that, that damage is very underrated. So you might start seeing a bunch of Zalos. You're right. I think a perfectly rolled auto rifle that has really uh, low impact but high fire rates. Oh yes, if it has super high stability and good range. That thing could be a beast. Um, if if I could say that Pope is absolutely right about that doctrine of passing the uh, mm-hmm. the trials auto rifle, uh, I got a three twenty light level one with counterbalance on it. Mm-hmm. There it is. God. Did you? I've gotten three of them all hidden. Have hand. you been a counterbalance, counterbalance and brace frame? Yes. Yes, that's the, that's the combo. Well, frame. yeah, okay, yeah. that's the combo right there is the counterbalance and brace frame, it's, and it's just destroys. Like, Dado, I'll have to let you share play my this auto rifle because it's stupid. It's just stupid. Yeah, I, I, I want one really bad. It's a fun gun to use, but I feel like when it has counterbalance, it's actually viable as a weapon. Oh, yep. It's unbelievably viable. I really, viable. really, really, really want to play it. It there. turns the bullet hose archetype into just a, a water jet. Like, it, it's mm-hmm. a straight line. Yeah. You pull ever Laser. so slightly down on the contr- on the control stick to correct that recoil, mm-hmm. and you just funnel bullets into people's heads. It's amazing. It is a lot of fun, and with a with a buff to the damage, it's going to dominate. Yes, nice. I actually got one this last trial, so that's not adept, but a regular drop, mm-hmm. and I I need to test it out because it has persistence. It's got counterbalance, and um, you'll yeah, like obviously it. Brace fame. Yeah, like yeah. you'll like it. Yes, mm-hmm. you will. I, I, I feel so dirty saying I like an auto rifle, but I like this one. <laughs> but something like Suros as well. Yeah, the the new Suros regime, we will definitely see a resurgence of that because yeah. the fact that it fires faster and has more stability. If you get to spinning up, if you actually get spinning up to happen, the thing's unbeatable. Yeah. It just melts people. But, I mean, it's it's rare that you can get that to happen because well, you got to shoot for a while. Well, you can – the spinning up, is it the longer you fire or is it the bottom of the mag? No, it's the longer you fire. Well, it's both. Okay. The longer you fire, um, the faster it'll shoot, but it takes about half the magazine for it to actually kick in okay. to a noticeable degree. I truly haven't played with the new Soros at all, so... It's fun, I- but it's it's rare to actually hit that point. It's it's like with Thunderlord. It's rare that you're getting to the point where you've shot 20 shots and, mm-hmm. okay, now it starts to kick in and you're like... Yeah. Oh, wait, you I think... I think hold, hold on. I the Yeah, the podcast... Yeah, we didn't get to talk about this last time we were on the podcast because it didn't happen yet. Uh, we we know some of the stuff that's coming to the December update. Like we know some yeah. of the. Quote, I wanted to mention weapons. the might of multi tool. I think scout yeah. rifles are going to be big. Yeah. 
Uh, Midas. Oh, Midas. Midas. Midas is going to be huge. Range yeah. nerf Midas to, is going to be uh, very, The range very nerf strong. to pulse rifles, scout rifles are going to come into their own, I think. And the mm-hmm. Midas multi-tools make it its comeback. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Beautiful Those thing. four-shot headshots. Yeah. And, and that increased yeah. agility is mm-hmm. so fun. And that and thing's going to be nasty. Data, good. what do you think it needs to happen to Fabian's strategy to be good? I thought that the front line's bonus was actually going to make the weapon fire noticeably faster. So that's what I thought would kind of give it an edge in PvP, where it's like, okay, if I am surrounded, I can maybe melt some people. What they're doing now with it, where it's like front lines basically turns it into a bullet hose, but it adjusts the damage as well. Like, that doesn't really sit too well with me, because bullet hoses historically are not great. But if it gets a good, like, stability buff, since they have to, like, change a bunch of the, the perks around on the gun to, to make sure that it doesn't break. If it gives it enough stability and if it's stable enough where it actually does do some work, I think it'll be an interesting option. Mm-hmm. Well, the, But if it doesn't do that, then it's just going to be a piece the, of crap. The, yeah, the problem is it has to actually be, like, a doctrine of passing with the counterbalance and persistence, essentially. Right. Well, the stability and buff I don't, I don't does think, work. I don't think it's going to hit that. As it sits now. Yeah, it I does mean, work. It's oh, yeah, super no, stable when that when that perk kicks in. Yeah, that's but true. It's the, the the damage is not really no the yeah noticeable enough. Like the, the the archetype right now is so not strong that it's it's tough for it to yeah. do well. It, it's um, said in the patch that it's actually going to bump it to the highest fire rate archetype when it when it goes right. in, into that mode. So that's why, like, I if it's not Doctor and Passing with max stability, then I don't know if it's going to be worth it. Yeah, and you're gonna rip totally, through your ammo. Totally agree. Got 40. forty shots. Ugh. You could bump it up to forty-eight, but they're getting rid of extended mag because of like if it still had it and you used it and it turned into a bullet hose, it would create some issue with the gun. So they're just like reworking all the column of bonuses to to make so it, it doesn't break. Maybe if they kept the damage but turned it into a bullet hose, it'd kind of be like you know it would annihilate things up close, but up uh, far away it would be a little bit tougher. But okay, we'll we'll see what happens with the gun. You know. One of, yeah. gotta play with it one of the interesting things they've done with when they bring year one guns into year two or year one anything into year two is they, they make minor tweaks. And now that they're bringing Dragon's Breath in, what kind of tweaks do you guys think they'll make to this gun to make it kind of more No relevant? longer makes your game crash. <laughs> <laughs> we had a lot of fun with that. I remember my, my raid group going in just like, what if we just spammed Dragon's Breath and brought six Warlocks? Uh, turns out bad things happen and you break Vault of Glass. Um, I think that gun could use a little bit more velocity. And if it got tracking, it would be yeah. fantastic. Yeah, I think tracking would be, would fantastic, be a big ticket right there. Another thing I think would be interesting would be if it had like uh, cluster bombs, but those cluster bombs turned into um, solar nades. Oh, that'd be explosion. awesome. So you just spread wildfire everywhere. I think that would be interesting to see. I don't know if it'd be good, but it would be very interesting to see. I have a Goodbye, feeling. Framer. I have a feeling that the arc. <laughs> if you take a look at the rocket launcher, it reminds me of the like a World War II nose art for a uh, fighter jet. I have a feeling that its intended design was to be to drop like napalm. You're going to shoot that rocket, and it was supposed to explode and drop napalm everywhere and burn everything. So I don't think you're that far off. I think the reworking of it is going to be a lot more lethal and spread fire wherever it goes, kind of like napalm. That'd be cool. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 Especially now because like in year two, it doesn't really feel like enemies move out of AOE as much as they did in year one. Mm-hmm. I definitely think so uh, like that, we, that might we might awesome. see like uh, them get kind of like Viking funeral added to it where they're going to burn or touch a flame, whatever, whatever the... We, right. we might see yeah. how like a, an actual burn associated with it, with it, where if you walk into that flame, you're going to take lingering damage as well. We might see something like that. That'd be good. That'd be awesome. I, That'd be a, a nice bonus. I, I think it would be cool for you know hitting a you hit the main boss or the main character in a PVE situation. You hit the knight or whatever the yellow character with the with the main brunt force of the rocket launcher, and maybe it doesn't kill it, but it damages it. And then the napalm spreads around to the ads and burns them, and oh, like almost like a firefly effect. Like yeah. it just kind of keeps chaining. That'd be cool. Yeah, yeah. Dude, it would be mm. sweet. It'd be really yeah. cool. I don't know. I'm hoping that they make it relevant, and I hope they make all of them relevant again. Yeah. Hey, Tefty, yeah, guess what's nice. coming back? 
No land the beyond. armamentarium. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, that. Yeah, Did you remember the podcast where I said what I wanted? I wanted the armamentarium, and you're mm-hmm. like, no. <laughs> yeah, I know. Arm I've already so Because good. I know it's back, I'm like, I've already made my peace with it. All right. I'm like, all right. Have your double nades, double lightning nades. We're going to need it for when uh, Sunbreakers get absolutely slapped in the From face. From the tears of Sunbreakers? Come yeah, going to go back to, to year one status, double lightning nades. Double double fusion grenades, double... I mean, it, really, any of the Solar Titan grenades are good. Yeah, they're, they're alright. They're, I don't think they're anything special, but they are they are solid. Does it give you double nades of anything? The armamentarium? Yeah. yeah. It just, yeah, give you an extra grenade. Oh, okay, got That's it. That's it. Yeah. For some reason, I thought it was only lightning nades, but I, it, it must is. be because all Titans rolled with lightning uh, nades. It was yeah, only lightning nades. Because they were the best nades. <laughs> yep. They were the only grenades. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I pretty much only started uh, being a Titan for eight months now. And even then, it doesn't get a lot of attention. So I'm sorry, Briar and Datto. I'm sorry. It's okay. You Souls should be. forgiven. <laughs> <laughs> what other questions we got from Twitter? Because we kind of went off on a tangent there. Okay. Did, did we talk about No Land Beyond, though? On the no Land Beyond podcast? coming back. A yeah. Bit. I want to know what you guys think they're going to do to it. I don't think they're going to do anything to they don't it. Really like, I think anything. The, the weapon... I remember from March, they said like in a, in an open house that the No Land Beyond was designed as a running gun PvP weapon for snipers. I don't think there's anything in the world that they can do to that thing to make it good in PvE. But I think if you make it too good in PvP, then everyone's just going to be running around with No Land Beyond, yeah. mm-hmm. one shotting mm-hmm. everybody. It already got kind of fixed in 2.0 too. Yeah, it was made a, a little bit easier to handle and to they use. Fix the, they fixed the um, parallax issue with the sights, yeah. which was right. very yeah. welcome. It's it's usable. You should still absolutely treat the thing with respect, but I don't think there's many changes they can make where it becomes good or in PvE or anything like that. You know, that that's a weapon where you, it's very, very small changes need to be made because I think just a little too much, and that will just tip it over the top. I know, like, um, basically... To being ridiculous. I, I'd love to have an M1 Garand-style rifle in Destiny, just because that's... If I ever play World mm-hmm. War II shooters, that's what I always use, but... Oh, God, if it if it had the same balance that it did in all those games, where it's, like, one-shot headshot with a, with a Garand, up, oh, all right, and it's fully semi-automatic, it would be stupidly yeah. good. It would be, like, a Call of Duty gun. Yeah. <laughs> yep. uh, more questions? Got? Uh, this is a weird question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Rezo Legend says, why didn't my beta stuff carry over? All right, thanks for having me on the show, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I very much appreciate that. We'll talk to you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> gonna... yeah. See you guys later. <laughs> Bye, Dad. <Dado. laughs> All right, Q asks, uh, is the buff to the first curse enough? I think, uh, Holtzman? All right, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh yes. Oh, I'll let Holtzman tackle that. Yeah, one. the <laughs> the first curse. I I think that buff it it's not gonna make it like Hawkmoon quality, but it'll make it way better to use. It'll be I don't want to say it'll be PVE viable, but I'll I'll be definitely I I have my eye on it now for both for PVP. I I'm willing to try it again for PVE. Um, just the fact that proking first curse will refill the magazine. That's really that's good. Cool. Um, that you're getting more range, more stability. Reload's not going to be an issue if you can proc first curse. So, yeah, I'm really excited about it. All right, uh, Tutorian asks, should Bungie be more transparent with future plans between content releases or just in general? We've actually talked about this one quite a bit. It's a tough question to answer because things change, right? Mm-hmm. Things happen, things change. So if they say one thing... And then three months later, it's different from the thing because something happened where they had to change it. Then there's riots in the streets. Oh, you said no this. Raid. And now it's going to be this. And that's BS. Like, it, it's it's tough to do it because you don't want to set false expectations. I assume he is trying to reference, or she uh, is trying to reference the fact that we haven't heard anything about what's coming next with regards to year two and in that regard i thought something was maybe going to be announced uh in the weekly update we didn't really get too much um the most they'd said is you know see at playstation experience but i do think that if we just isolate vanilla destiny and taken king destiny there's a lot more stuff to do in taken king destiny so a lot 
more play or more players are still kind of chewing through that content so they're not as desperate to find out what's coming in the future because they they still have their plate half full of stuff to do mm-hmm. um it's just the people at the higher end and the people who follow the game a lot are just like all right what's what's next come on come on Got to got to feed the uh, the addiction. Got to feed feed the my, dragon. Uh, my, <laughs> feed my <man>. thirst <laughs> for knowledge. <laughs> and um, so it's just you know it's just people wanting to be anxious. So while I'm surprised they haven't announced anything quite yet, we know that it's coming. And otherwise, I think you know yeah, I think I think it's okay what they're doing right now. But they really need to like just drop. Drop, drop something on the floor and let someone pick it up and <laughs> let other people oogle at it for a little bit uh, just to calm the masses. Um, Early December, yeah, I think it'd be wise to that we start hearing about something. Right. I, I totally agree. Yeah. AUF Rillo 117, do you think they'll add an additional tier to the subclass to revamp subclasses? An additional tier? Tier to the subclass to revamp uh, Basically, so, so, like, when you go look at, say, Sunbreaker right now, there'd be another row of things on the right or at the very bottom. Uh, oh, like, another column. Like column. I think that's what he's saying. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I don't anticipate that happening anytime soon, honestly. Um, I think if whenever they revamp the, the subclasses, they're... They're just going to revamp existing talents. I don't think they're going to tack on another row. That might be something for a major expansion or a, a game release. But in the middle of the year, I I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, no. Well, we'd see it with a big major release if it does happen. They they take so many yeah. design choices like that from World of Warcraft. And we'll, I'm sure we'll see something like that at some point in Destiny's lifetime. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the Briar Rabbit asks, uh, "What do you guys think <laughs> we'll see in Destiny Two? Do you think we'll see brand new subclasses, or do you think we'll see additional subclasses? You know, do you think do you think we're going to see the same subclasses just added to them or modified, or do you think we're going to see brand new subclasses for year three? Year three, year- yeah, my bad. Destiny okay. Two is what okay. I was kind of getting at. Okay, okay, I was going to say year two. This this question's from about four months ago. Well, I'm I'm really curious." Um, <laughs> uh, fair enough um i don't know so someone else can, can tackle that while i think for something yes great answer <laughs> <laughs> killed it killed it um, the, the the problem with adding new subclasses is that they have to fulfill a design premise right they have to do something different compared to the other subclasses that are already in the game so you can invent a new uh, a new elemental archetype, you can call it poison mm. or acid or something like that. But if the subclass doesn't do anything different compared to the subclasses we already have, that doesn't really fulfill a design problem in the game so, that just kind of like, do you th- it's like, look, it's now it's a different color. Now it's green. It do you hat. think that they're going to keep like defenders in Destiny 2? Yes. Yeah, you think that they're going to move forward with the subclasses I, they have? They're not going to just like wipe them out and, re- and start from. I scratch. think they have a problem with the lore right now to just to get rid of them that way. You know, to That's true. They they're they're yeah. part of the the storyline now. Like ninety percent of people haven't even read would... the grimoire, so we're good. <laughs> I think if they wanted to, yeah, that's true. I think if they wanted to revamp them, you know, they could do something like that. But I think just ripping out something like Defender out of the game and replacing it with something else would be, yeah, uh, not. The greatest idea. Mm-hmm. Quodron the Gate Lord. Man, I haven't seen you in a while, man. How you yeah. doing? <laughs> Prison of Elders and Year One raids are pointless right now. Should they be useful in some way? For new players, they're not useless. This one hits a home for Quodron, I bet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he wants to make himself a little bit more. He relevant, had it. Huh? He had himself to be relevant when the three of coins <laughs> farming was going on. <laughs> As I made this Twitter account, and nobody ever comes see me anymore. Oh, man. <laughs> I feel the same. I feel badly for the 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 Gallahorn guy too. <laughs> yeah, he had to add like a mustache and a top hat to his uh, thing to make himself look relevant. Going through a midlife <laughs> crisis over there. He went and bought a Ferrari and he's driving. Yeah, I'm just Venus. gonna say he just got a Corvette. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. do you guys um, think? Your one raids are they pointless? It's it's uh I mean Patrick and I are from 
from Wildlands where uh, everything becomes irrelevant the next time something new comes out. Like him and I are used to that. That's 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 gaming 101 for us. Like, oh, we're moving up in power level. All stuff let's gets left behind. Um, it I think it would be cool to if they did it. Uh, but we you know we kind of talked about it earlier. Uh, it depends on how loot is brought back. If it's loot, if it's brought back, uh, you know, do you nerf stuff like Found Verdict, uh, Fatebringer, Vision of Confluence to make it more year two friendly? Um, is it going to be worth running? You know, why why do people want to run it? Because you can still go run Vault of Glass and Crota's End right now if you mm-hmm. want. It's it sounds more like. We want these to be relevant because we want them to give loot, not we want these to be relevant because Destiny is set up a way, in a way, where lower level stuff can still totally kick your ass if you're not paying attention. Mm-hmm. Um, so it sounds like to me, when people ask for those raids back, they really want them back with loot yeah. and with incentive. Um, they want a 320 where, fate bringer. Right, and that's where mm-hmm. we kind of fall into some interesting... Um, challenges with regards to uh what bungie wants you know for their game uh what you know how how they want loot to to work and all that kind of stuff and that's not a question i feel like many of us can answer because we don't know yeah or anything like that so it's i actually feel like they are relevant they are reusing that content you know we i already talked about the fate the the quest that where you have to go back and do it Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah and uh, you go back to Crota's End as well in this in this DLC. I think that's really cool. You know, you kill the two, uh, or you go and you steal Crota's soul or whatever you're doing in there. I th- I think that's cool. It's a good, cool way of using the old raids and the old content. I'm I'm down with that. I, I love how you have to go back in and and kill Atheon with you know your fully leveled up you know everything. You just like rock his world. I think that's fun as hell. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. I'm okay with how they're treating the year one raids. I think it's a cool way to do it. You're not going to yeah, get a 320 I, fate bringer though, right? Yeah, yeah you can't even get a muggle loot. Just, <laughs> the exact yeah. same rules. I have seen some. I have seen a couple of Twitter uh, pictures directed at me saying that they got a fate bringer. I was like, "You are one lucky guy." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when that hand cannon around. buff comes back in, mm. yeah, it's gonna be pretty good. But yeah, it's. I, I don't. It's. It's not a question we can really give any sort of true answer without asking Bungie directly about what they feel about it all right well that was the uh 46 planet destiny podcast and i got through it without raging about target even though at one point i think i was going to there so yep, GG, you're about to you we, we, we brought you back down yeah, we're, we're we good. brought we're you back good. down to earth you held me back Just, you held me back you know actually uh one last twitter question la greasy tank asks i'm thinking <laughs> of getting a job at target patrick you just want what to are the that options <laughs> le- that is an actual tank? tweet because i saw that earlier <laughs> oh my god uh, that's perfect thanks for asking it. that question wow. you want to get so a what job say you? at target <laughs> You had to be in my position when I was getting a job at Target where I was like, I need money. And so I had to work at, I, I took that job, um, which you can't say in the interview. Like, what, why do you want to work here at Target? Well, I need to feed my family. I, <laughs> you have, you money, have money and I want and I can I can work <laughs> for money. So please give me money and I'll, you know, I'll do stuff. Yeah. Um, and so, Patrick, how do you see yourself fitting into the uh, target community? Uh, I see myself fitting how do you in look here at red? from about 845 when I clock in till about 3 p.m. when I clock out. That's about the the time. Well, Patrick, that's not a fast, fun, friendly environment. I know it's not. By the way, <laughs> by the way, guys, uh, we were so we were close. close. We were so, we were so close. close. It's Thanksgiving. <laughs> we can have we can have some stuff. The the target they they want you to be like fun happy and all the time and they they, mm-hmm. they they write all the all the fun happy messages that you do up on a wall called the vibe and that what they call it is vibing. Uh-huh. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Do you want to wear the recommended minimum flare, or do you want to wear <laughs> more flare? <laughs> That's basically what it feels like. And of course, you know they sell red shirts. I have. I own one pair of pants now. Because Wait, they other... sell those shirts? You don't get them for free? No, no. You have to buy your own shirts. Um, oh, that's what? Oh, yes. yeah. Serious? Yeah. You have to buy your you own don't shirts. You get a uniform? No, no. You had to buy. Your, you had to buy your own everything. Um, they, they gave you your name tag. That's well. That's about well, it. That's nice. <laughs> 
um, and they misspelled mine. So then I had to wait. I think it was like four months for me to get my first one. So I was Patrick, but without a CK. It was just just a C. Mm-hmm. Oh, I thought it was just going to be Patrick. <laughs> Patrick. <laughs> yeah, Patrick. Patrick. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I, I feel like it. that was the best question of the day. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Killed it. No, I'll, 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 on my personal channel, I'll be doing some big rants about Tar. Just doing like the, the telling stories from it. Yeah. Tales, tales, <laughs> from the tales from retail. Target. Like, like, like this tales one time when I was, you know, just tired of everyone's shit. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was tired, I was tired of everyone's shit. Love so when guys. I'm sitting there having to restock shelves and there's some little bratty kid making a bunch of noises and I start just mimicking his noises. Okay. And then right. his father, just mute his mic his father was standing right next to him and heard me mimicking his noises. And I was doing it in a very obnoxious manner. And my manager was also standing next to me, which I didn't notice. <laughs> um, and then he just comes up. I wish we were on team speak. He just comes up to me and goes, hey. You don't have kids, do you? Why are you being so inconsiderate? And I'm like, I don't know if I have any kids. You're right. And he, he just went away. And then my manager goes, so you're going to need to not do that ever again. I'm like, oh, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, I, I, I hated working with Target because kids and everything. Well, you can find me at the Briar Rabbit. <laughs> 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 Fire Rabbit channel on YouTube. Thanks for watching. <laughs> oh man, Tefty. Uh, you can talk to me at Teft on Twitter, and you can uh, catch the streams that I do for Planet Destiny at twitch.tv forward slash planet underscore destiny, and check out my own channels as well, um, the YouTube channel Teft Teft Games and my Twitch channel Tefty Teft. Thanks, guys, and happy Thanksgiving. And uh, this has been uh, Pope Bear. You can follow me on Twitter at Pope Bear. I uh, stream occasionally with uh, Planet Destiny. And uh, yeah, you can find me lurking in their streams. And I am Dado. You can find me over at youtube.com slash Dado Does Destiny. Or you can find me on my live streams on Twitch, twitch.tv slash It's Dado. And I'm Patrick Casey. You can find me on uh, Planet Destiny. Usually I go first, but I'm going to go last here this time because I was too busy ranting about Target. <laughs> you can find you can Patrick find on Planet Tata. Destiny's website, but you will not find him at a Target. Pro, this pro tip season. if you're ever... You can find him on reddit.com slash r slash tales from retail. Oh, probably, probably, yeah. <laughs> pro tip if you're ever wanting to uh, get a promotion at Target, uh, don't say that you need more money because that's not a valid excuse. So Damn. Have a good Thanksgiving, everyone. This is the 46th Planet Destiny podcast, and we'll see you next week. (laughs) Oh, that was awesome.